Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another episode summary cast list analysis, really a cast list analysis. Um, this is actually the first time in my channel's history that I am analyzing and discussing a cast list with you guys after the prior episode. We always get the cast list eight days before the episode it's corresponding to, which means if the show airs on a Wednesday, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains does, we will get the cast list Tuesday morning, and my video will come out Tuesday morning. So I'm discussing what the next episode might entail without seeing the next episode, well, what two episodes from now might entail without seeing the next episode. So it's kind of cool to have already seen episode 20, and be analyzing the cast list. This is only a one-time thing. It's because I was very busy on Tuesday, so it probably will not happen again. But if you are joining me, thank you, because this is a very uh, special video in terms of the first time ever. And I think over, we are almost probably like over 50, including ARC-5 cast lists that I've analyzed. Uh, the first time ever that we are doing it after one of the prior episode has aired. So that is really cool. So you are joining me on a very uh, special occasion. But anyway... I was really waiting, too, because the cast list was so short. I was hoping, because Thursday mornings, I think Weekly Jump comes out, and sometimes, very seldom, we get new information regarding the episode, and I was kind of hoping we were going to get new information regarding episode 21, because I'll tell you right now, the cast list is extremely, extremely small. I actually think it is the smallest cast list we have ever seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! history since I've started doing them. So going and But, like, I'm even thinking of Arc 5. Five episodes, and I can't remember any Arc 5 episodes that didn't entail at least six characters. And I'll, I'll read you the summary right now. Yusaku and Kusanagi analyze Soul Technology's data and discover some new information about the incident ten years ago. Meanwhile, at Yusaku's house, Ignis and Robapi are secretly plotting something. The cast is Yusaku, Ignis, Kusanagi, Robapi, and Revolver. Literally, we see all of them in the preview, and not only that, the only one that we, like, weren't 100% sure based on the summary that we had for 21 last week was Revolver, if they were going to be speaking, because we knew K Ignis and Robapi were going to be speaking, we knew Yusaku and Kusanagi would obviously be speaking, and then we have Revolver. So literally, it is a small, small cast list, and we have no other information. It doesn't even say extras, it doesn't even say who's animating this episode, it just says Yoshida did the script. The summaries for this month were really, really weird. The episode 20 cast list came out like... 12 hours after it normally does for whatever reason they just forgot to include it the 20 and 21 summaries which we should have which should have not only gotten the summaries or at least at the very least we should have gotten the titles for the episode but we didn't and that was in the beginning of the month because we usually get the summaries for the whole month we only got 18 and 19 so the summaries and normally for the cast list we would see who's animating it and who is doing the other stuff so this has been a weird weird month for episode summaries hopefully next month it goes back to normal but I'm just saying it's interesting to see who's animating because we're probably approaching another No Gilbo episode and he's obviously the usually the objectively best director or the best animation director, excuse me, on the show. He did episode 7, he did episode 15, so he's doing it about every 7 or 8 episodes. So we're approaching most likely another No Gilbo episode and he did Blue Angel's duel, he did Emma's duel, so it'll be interesting to see if another maybe female duelist will be stepping up to the plate. But guys, I can't wait to talk to you down below because where is the show going to go from here? Episode 21 is titled A New Battle Begins, and it really feels like the first arc has concluded, and this is like the transfer period to the next arc, to the next battle. And yes, while the main focus now is on Dr. Kogami, I still feel like they are going to learn, maybe in this data, that this was a cover-up, that Kogami was either framed or maybe was part of the you know, experiment, and they decided to pin all the blame on him and get rid of him, and therefore, out of spite, he decided to create the Knights of Hanoi and is trying to destroy everything Soul Technologies has. I, I think back to Zexel, and I like to think back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel a lot nowadays because Yoshida, obviously, that was his last Yu-Gi-Oh! show that he directed, that he wrote, and I remember in the very beginning parts of Zexel, it was very similar where we had two factions. We had two factions fighting. You had, this was maybe not around here, it was probably around episode 40, 50, but you had Dr. Hart, Dr. Hartland, Mr. Hartland and Dr. Faker, and you also had the Arclight family. You had Tron, you had V, 4, and 3, and while the brothers besides 4 maybe weren't so intimidating and so threatening, Tron was a messed up dude. And remember, Tron and Faker hated each other. 
And Yuma was kind of caught in the middle of that. Yuma and Kaido were really both caught in the middle of that. And so too Shark, I guess you can say. And it just seems like the parallels here are uncanny where you have Soul Technologies uppers, which, sure, we don't have any confirmation that they're evil, but I think you'd have to be a little ignorant to say, oh, yeah, they're probably fine. You have to at least be suspect of them. And you also have the Knights of Hanoi who, and Kogami, who obviously are trying to destroy everything. And maybe it's for the betterment, we don't really know. But obviously, there's some kind of conflict there that Yusaku maybe is going to be caught in the middle of, especially if there is some hatred between Kogami and Soltek. We know there's hatred between the Knights of Hanoi and Soltek. Just reminds me a lot of Faker and Tron. Remember, right before Tron defeated Kaido, the only character in Zexel that was able to defeat Kaido, he mocked Dr. Faker. There was a lot of hatred and resentment between those two, and it's just good when a show has multiple evil factions. It just adds extra dimensions, and it kind of adds that unpredictability factor of, like, who's in the right here, who's in the wrong, because you feel like both groups aren't necessarily in the wrong, and I'd probably lean towards the Knights of Hanoi right now that aren't in the wrong. Uh, but I- I'm getting a little off topic because as for this episode, there's just not much to go based off of. I'm just trying to think that maybe something's going to come out in the data that will link so- the Soul Technologies uppers to this, which would be awesome. And that's why it's titled A New Battle Begins, because if they're only going after Kogami and the Knights of Hanoi now, that's not really a new battle. You know what I mean? Maybe Playmaker is going to have some kind of interaction with Revolver in this episode. Otherwise, Revolver is just talking to himself. So that would be cool if Playmaker, in the second half of the episode, goes and tries to find Revolver and they have a brief conversation about the incident that happens. And maybe Revolver is going to change Playmaker's mind and say, look, we're doing this for the betterment of the world for whatever reason. Soul Technologies, the Cybers, they're the ones that need to be stopped. Another very, very wild card factor in this is Ignis and Robopi. Is this line about them secretly plotting something, is this a joke line? Is this going to be a line where they're planning like a surprise birthday party for Yusaku? Or is this a line where we're actually going to start seeing some malice intent? from these robots, especially from Ignis, where we're actually going to see some maybe kind of uneasiness as a viewer from what Ignis is doing with Robopi, and not not in that way, and I'm, I'm not, in that, <laughs> that, was, that was worded horribly, I mean like him doing something evil, like brainwashing her, or telling her that they have to destroy the human race, not not what, what's been implied so far, I, I apologize for, for any um, lewd suggestions, but I'm kind of hoping that that's the case, because if that's the case, now we have three groups, right? Now we have the Knights of Hanoi, now we have these AIs, which could be the, the second main antagonist wave, and now we have these Soltek uppers, and so now we have these three factions, we have characters like Playmaker, Kusanagi, Go, Akira, Emma, these complex characters who are caught in the middle of all this, who are caught in the middle of basically a cybers, big corporation, rogue, hacker, terrorist group war, and that is what is awesome, right? Because if episode 21 can introduce Ignis as a somewhat threat and maybe make us a little more suspect of him, and they can introduce the Soltek uppers or someone else at Soltek that was clearly responsible for this incident, all of a sudden, Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrain's, the storyline is going to really, really heat up, and that is going to be awesome to keep an eye on. But anyway, guys, I'm going to cut myself short right there. Let me know all your thoughts about episode 21 and where you think the show is going to go from here. What do you guys think the next duel is going to be? Part of me is leaning towards Playmaker Revolver, but I don't really think that'll be the case. I'm just very interested to see where the show is going to go from here on out. Thank you so much, so much for watching as always. We should get the 22, 23, 24, 25 summaries hopefully soon, maybe not next week. If not next week, in two weeks, definitely. We'll get the 22 summary on Tuesday morning when we get the cast list, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day.